Well, hello and welcome to another episode of More Perfect Marketing. My name is David Baer. Earlier today, I was chatting with some of the marketing agency owners I work with, and I realized that there's, well, there's lots of types of agency owners, but for simplicity purposes, I'm going to define two types, enlightened and unenlightened. And what I mean by an enlightened agency owner is, is one who recognizes that the work that they're doing with their client impacts stuff beyond the work they're doing with their client. What do I mean by that? Well, when an agency is involved in generating traffic to a website or getting phones to ring or getting people to come into a store, that doesn't mean that that's the end of the work when it comes to that business generating revenue from that effort. And so when I came across today's guest and she shared with me the notion of the fact that advertising, the area that she specializes in, is going to, in her words, amplify your business, regardless of whether it's amplifying the right things you're doing in your business or the wrong things. And so we also need to sort of help businesses address that too. Well, you can imagine I had a huge smile on my face because that's the way that I like to think about marketing as well. So I want to welcome her into the conversation. Michelle Kopp is joining me from down in Southern California, and she is specializing in an area, by the way, I should say, an area that relates to Google and other you know search platforms, but it's not search engine optimization. It's pay-per-click advertising. Well, Michelle, welcome to the call. Thank you so much, David. I'm really excited to be here today. <laughs> so I'm sorry. I, just, I that, that was like first and foremost in my head because it was like the, the last thing you said before I hit record. Um, and there is this difference, obviously, between SEO and PPC. And so I wanted to sort of start there because a lot of the challenges that businesses have when it comes to going out and engaging a service provider, marketing agency, is just to figure out like, what's the discipline, what's the channel, what's the activity that they should start with in the first place that would be most appropriate for their needs. And so obviously you have a specialty in an area of pay-per-click advertising, but a lot of people come to you and ask you, hey, can you help me out with this, that, or the other thing, including what you specialize in? How do you determine whether what you do and what they need is in fact the right fit? Yeah. So basically what it comes down to is the starting point. If they're like a brand new business and they haven't done any SEO or any pay-per-click, I really try to look at like, what's the actual like search volumes around the types of keywords that they're going after. Um, and then just try to see like uh, what would be a good fit based off of that. So typically I would always recommend a business to, to do a combination of both. Um, but typically to start out, it would be SEO, um, just getting your website like ranked, getting, you know, trying to start to, you know, get that process going. Eventually you're going to want to do SEO because that's free traffic that's coming to your website. Pay-per-click advertising is more of like a supplement, but it also is a, is something that allows you to move up faster um, so that you can create ads and appear at the top of Google pretty much within sometimes even less than 24 hours. So mm -hmm. there's pros and cons. SEO can take nine to 12 months, depending on, or even more, depending on the niche that you're in, especially like if you're in legal and it's a very competitive market, if you're brand new into the into you know, digital marketing, you should be investing in both um, because eventually you want to be getting that free traffic. But pay-per-click advertising is going to allow you to show up front and center in that spotlight at the very top of Google. Yeah. Um, and then you can do like a marketing mix depending on what type of return on investment that you're getting from the advertising. So that's typically how I like to look at it. So... Uh... I, I was an agency um, owner years ago. Back in around 2010, uh, I ran a Facebook ads agency. And one of the the chronic problems I ran into, and I'm certain that in, in your line of work, this is, a, this is a big challenge, is businesses would come to me and say, I'd like traffic run, you know, when the, the particular channel that we were running traffic from. And I'd say, great, where do you want it run to? Well, my homepage, right? And, you know, sometimes that's appropriate. Sometimes it's not. 
Um, but this, I think, is is just the beginning of the conversation around the amplification point that that you made to me um, when we were talking about what we might want to talk about here on this episode. And so I wonder if we can use that example to sort of illustrate what advertising can amplify both good and bad. Yeah, great point. Great question. So there's so many things that advertising can do, but let's just focus and let me just touch and say advertising is not going to fix your business, <laughs> especially if you've got a lot of things wrong on the back end. If you've got things dialed in really well, it's only going to amplify it. And you're going to, if you have advertising that's good advertising and a good offer, then of course, things are going to, you'll be able to scale faster that way. But on the other end, if there's things that are wrong in your business, uh, let's say operations or a poor performing website, poor converting website, sending traffic, paid traffic to those places is just going to make things even worse. So going to your question when it comes to, you know, with Facebook advertising or any type of advertising in general, when, you know, we're, uh, we're trying to send traffic somewhere and it's amplifying Let's say that you have a website that does not have a good navigation menu. You don't even have the phone number on it. The, the contact form is hidden. Well, you're pretty much sending traffic to a place where the traffic's getting confused. They're going to bounce. You paid for those clicks. And eventually, you know, all this money is going down the drain. So pretty much there's so many leaks that's going on. That's why you need to have... Uh, a, str a strategy around putting together a well-optimized, highly converting landing page or website. Um, and there's tools out there um, that allow you to see how people behave on your website too, so that you can make better um, decisions around how you would want to optimize your website to get better quality leads. So I, I want to talk about those tools in a minute, but I wonder if you can sort of um walk through some of the things that maybe a business might do in terms of self-assessment. If they're either currently running their own ads or have a service provider running ads for them, what should they be looking through to say, are we doing the best that we sh we could be or do we need to make some changes? And then maybe we'll talk about heat mapping or, or some of the other things that that we might um, be able to use to, to analyze you know, what people are doing when they hit that website. Yeah, so there's a couple things like if if you're just talking about the ads in general, um, you know, you want to look at your landing page. Are you are you even converting? Because sometimes I see sometimes like when when I'm running ads for clients, not when I'm running, but when I like auditing um, ads that uh, other people are running for their clients. Conversion tracking and all this like back end stuff is all set up like incorrectly. Um, and that is going to completely mislead you in terms of like making the right updates and changes to your website um, and to your and to your um, campaigns. So that's that's a critical piece. Give an um, example of, of what might be incorrect. So pretty much tracking page views instead of actual leads. That's the number one issue that I see. Sometimes they're placed the code in the wrong place. And then you see that you've generated 300 leads in a day, but technically it was only like 10 because mm -hmm. you're, you're tracking every, uh, every user on the actual landing page, every visit, not the actual person that submitted the form or contacted. So that's a really big uh, error that I tend to see. Mm -hmm. Now, if we're talking about some other issues that I tend to see too, um, outside of the ads, I'd say that a huge thing is on the operations front with the business. So, you know, when it comes to self-assessment, it's understanding your numbers. What are your close rates? Most business owners don't understand what, don't even know what their close rates are. If I were to give you 10 quality leads, how many can your, how many can your sales uh, team close out of those 10 leads? A lot of times business owners tend to overestimate what their close rates are because they're counting in referrals or like hot leads that are coming from places that are already pre-sold. But what I have to remind a lot of these uh, business owners is that Traffic from the internet is fickle. Like these people, they need to be nurtured. Um, so it does, it can take time. There's at least in terms of follow-up and touch points, five to eight touch points typically in order to actually like get in touch with people, um, depending on the niche. 
Uh, some niches, if we're like emergency services, like locksmith, garage door repair, it's going to be a lot quicker because these people need the services right away. But if we're talking B2B, it can take quite a while to get in touch with the decision maker, even if they've submitted a form. So this is, I think, a perfect example of what I was talking about earlier when I was talking about enlightened marketers is, is the fact that there's consideration of what's happening in the business beyond the you know, the, the role that you might play. I'm curious to understand how you address that stuff with clients. I mean, is that is that stuff that you're hands-on uh, involved in helping them figure out and build out or are you, or are you or simply sort of bringing it up and saying, you need to address this too because you have a responsibility after I bring you the traffic or something in between? Something in between. So what I tell my clients is when we work together, when we do pay-per-click advertising, it is a joint accountabilities model. It's not a situation where you pay me a fee and then I generate direct customers for you because I'm not the one answering the phone. There's an entire flow that that's in place from the time that I set up the ads, the landing pages, the phone call tracking, the forms, to then actually sending you the leads and your, your sales team the leads. Then your sales team has to follow up with them and all of all the, all those leads go into the CRM. Um, and then from there, it's just a matter of following up and trying to then close. The challenge is I don't actually offer sales coaching. That's not my area of specialty. That's a completely different beast to handle, mm -hmm. right? And sometimes the people that are answering the phone, they're not even salespeople. They're just customer service reps. So they're not really trained to close. They're just trained to deliver good customer service. So that's where the challenge lies. And that's where sometimes where sometimes clients are like, well, how come I'm not getting the return on investment? And then we have to look at every stage of the funnel. And typically, once we start listening to the phone calls, we'll start noticing that the issue is, oh, maybe this person didn't really do the best job in actually trying to nurture this lead, or they were kind of rude, or maybe they didn't explain the service as well. So then the client would then go back and talk to their team to try to you know, put something in place to improve. Um, so it is, so what I'll do is I'll help identify it, but I can't fully fix it. I can give suggestions, but at the end of the day, the back end operations is something that I can't have full control over. So I try to contribute where I can, but at the same time, like, you know, it's really up to the client to take the feedback and then try to turn that into either improving it, or if they don't try to improve it, then eventually it's just not going to work because, we, the client's going to keep investing, investing, investing in advertising, but we're only amplifying something that's bad because they don't have the right operations in place to really close out those leads and turn it into, you know, return on investment. See, I've heard you now bring up twice examples of analyzing what's happening after the traffic comes to a business. One was looking at what's happening on the website, and, and I'd love you to sort of explain that a little bit more detail. But you also gave this example of, you know, listening to call recordings and analyzing what's happening there. Can you talk a little bit, um, and, and maybe after you sort of dig deeper into to the first example there, uh, about, you know, the, the role that... Um, that the additional data that you're collecting, right? You have the data of what's happening with the ads, but there's this additional element of data that really can be impactful in, you know, making further conversions or making adjustments and, and the role that that plays in sort of developing uh, and tweaking and refining marketing campaigns over the course of time. I can't tell you how many times I run a pay-per-click advertising campaign on Google, and I thought I was killing it for clients in terms of performance because I got all the tracking in place, all the phone calls are going through, everything's like off the hook. But then when I have these conversations with the clients, they're like, wait, wait a minute, how come I'm not seeing like new patients or new, like new business come in? So then that's when we start having to dig in and see what where are things falling off in terms of the funnel, because at every stage of the funnel, you're going to be losing people from the actual ad to the click to the landing page to actually becoming a lead and then to the next step and the next step. Um, so it's really interesting that, you know, you brought that up. Um, I'd say that, you know, when it comes to, uh, you know, running these types of campaigns, uh, really digging in and trying to, you know, you know, do an assessment and see, okay, where 
Where are things potentially like falling off? Um, and then digging deeper and trying to assess it with the client is going to be like the most like critical, like part of, you know, the job. So um, going back to your, yeah, going back to your question, I'd say that that's probably the the most, you know, critical thing to, to, to identify and look at. You just talk a little bit about the the website visits and and I assumed it was heat mapping that you were talking about or 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 screen capture and sort of what that part is like. Obviously, I think most listeners will know what it means to listen on a recording of a phone call, but there's other things that you can be analyzing. And this is a good example of another area that might might be worth a, a, a business investing time in analyzing what's happening after that you know click comes to the site. Yeah, absolutely. So I use, so there's a couple tools out there. There's one called Crazy Egg. It's really cheap in terms of a free tool out there that everyone can leverage, uh, Microsoft Clarity. It's as easy as just dropping a tag on the back of your website and seeing how people actually like behave. Heat maps, actual screen recordings. Uh, so you could see how people behave and if they're bouncing too quickly, where are they spending their time on? And are they even scrolling to the bottom of your of your landing page or website? So those are really important things to look at in terms of like landing page optimizations, because you can do the best job you can on the conversion and the campaign setup. But then when it comes to landing page, you are completely blind to what's actually happening um, on the on the landing page if you don't have a tool like like that. Thanks. I, I appreciate you walking through that. Th this is the kind of thing that I, I find very few marketers spending any time or attention um you know, with their clients on. And so I'm I'm glad that we've had a chance to sort of walk through that piece. I'm curious in, in your experience, um, you've worked with different size businesses, right? You, you you told me before we hit record, you worked in the small business space. You then, you know, went in, and worked in the uh, um, Fortune 500 uh, big brand space. And now you're, you're back serving smaller businesses again with your agency. What are the the differences in the way that that those businesses tend to embrace all of this, you know, what could be considered, you know, laborious extra work and why can't, you know, my agency just do the work for me kind of stuff? What what how how does that um how do, how does the role that the business needs to play in marketing differ depending on the size of the organization? Yeah, so I say that uh, when it comes to the size of the organization, um, so a couple things, a couple things here. So when it comes to the size of the org uh, of, of the organization, um, could you repeat your question one more time? Sorry. Sure. So I guess I guess what what I'm saying is, and and it was a leading question because I know that in the corporate space, there's a right. lot more detailed attention paid to minute things because. They have the budget, they have the budget that they have to spend, or they don't get the budget again next year, et cetera. Absolutely. Right? But then in the small business space, they're too busy focused on their business and they don't have time for marketing, right? So they kind of say, oh, you just deal with it. Yeah. And I'm curious how, um, I, and so I've answered the question that I've asked. So I'm going to ask a slightly different question, which is how do you perceive working as a marketer in those two spaces? Which do you, which do you enjoy more? Obviously one, there's plenty of money and maybe not the most interesting uh, opportunities in, in, a, in a larger organization versus a smaller organization where you might feel a lot more resistance to the things that they could be doing to improve the the things in their business that you can help them with. Yeah. So my personal take on that is I personally love working with uh, small businesses. <laughs> yeah. So I actually started out my career working with small businesses um, at a small digital marketing agency and then went on to go work for Toyota and PM Arco, Sage Accounting Software, and then went back to small business at the start of the pandemic because there was so much red tape working for these large organizations. Yes, we had big budgets. We could test a lot of great things. We had access to resources like these heat maps and stuff like that. Um, but a lot of times there was a lot of red tape to actually get things moving and get things implemented that slowed us down from actually getting results. And you would think too that like working for these big organizations, they would have their operations all set. But actually, you know, going back to what I was talking about earlier, actually, that's not the case. A lot of times what we kind of um, looked under the hood and we found out that 
you know, hey, it's really the grass isn't really greener on the other side <laughs> where there there are bigger budgets. In fact, when there's bigger budgets, a lot of things get thrown under the you know under the bus or under mm-hmm. the hood and you're just you know things just go missing versus yeah. in a small business it's easier to control all those aspects and sure when it comes to small businesses there are growing pains and challenges too when it comes to operations and stuff like that but i found that a lot of the small business owners that i work with and not every single small business owner is going to be the best fit to work with me you've got to be open minded you've got to be an established business you've got to be you know wanting to grow um and if you have that type of mindset, then advertising, and you also have good operations, then advertising is going to be a good fit for you. Um, you know what, uh, at the end of the day. Yeah. It, it, it's, I, I imagine there's, there's lots of opportunity in the, in the large enterprise space to learn about and to be exposed to all the range of testing. I'm curious, have you been able to take things from that world and apply them to some of the things that you're doing with, with your smaller clients, even, even if they're not, you know, dealing with the the budgets and can't do eight, 800 different variations of an ad. What, where, where are you pulling from that experience that you can now apply to, to the clients you, you serve? I love that question. A lot of it has to do with like campaign organization and campaign structures. Um, So when I worked with large businesses, I would test a lot of different campaign structures and different strategies. Um, And then now I already know what works with the big businesses and I can bring what the, the, the winnings and the learnings from that. And we cut down all this time from the learning with the small businesses that I can just take that and then implement it there. Now, just because it was a success with the big business does not meet necessarily mean with enterprise doesn't necessarily mean you can transfer directly to small businesses, but um, it's a good, it's a good learning that you can leverage in terms of insights and stuff like that to help allow you to, uh, to move faster in terms of getting results. Because when you're working with small budgets, they don't give you a lot of time either. So mm-hmm. you have to, you have to move pretty quickly or else you, you're not going to have that account for very long. So that allows us to bypass this big learning period, yeah. um, that, uh, that we, that we would have had to go through if we didn't, if I didn't have that knowledge from working with enterprise, um, companies. Well, speaking of the the fact that you don't have a lot of time with a smaller budget, um, you know, we're we're recording this in 2023. This is a very active period of change in lots of things in the world at the moment, um, including artificial intelligence that's come into our world in so many different places. In your world, there's you know, Google has their performance max element of, of their advertising platform. I'm curious how you have been shifting and changing, if at all, over the last several years from kind of, you know, ma- manual to programmatic to embracing the the changes in the technology of the platforms through which you, you manage uh, all of the work that you're doing. Yeah, I'd say that if you don't adapt, you're going to be left behind. So yeah, it's really important to keep up with everything that's going on because it's moving super fast with all these different things that Google's integrating. Um, I'd say that when it comes to what you just mentioned, performance max and lead generation, it doesn't really work that well for small businesses. Any type of budget that's like under $10,000 a month is not really the best fit. So a lot of my clients, they tend to be in that range of $10,000 or less. So I try to stay away from that. But any client that's above it, I have seen some level of results. Um, It mostly works best with like Google Shopping and Mm -hmm. e-commerce. But that's actually something that I'm trying to steer away from. I mostly work with professional services and in lead generation. So so typically with what I run with my clients is more of like the standard Google campaigns, um, but leveraging different types of tools like chat GPT and Google Bard and Google's starting to integrate more AI features into its uh, platform that I think a lot of marketers are really concerned that their job might be <laughs> taken away from them, you know, based off of all this you know AI that's coming out. But the way that I'm viewing it is AI is only going to get better and it's going to be an assistant to us. It's not going to be necessarily taking away our jobs because at the end of the day, um, we're going to, 
there's going to be a need for someone to strategically come up with ideas and AI is not there yet. And I don't think mm-hmm. it ever will be. It, do, it does not understand the context, especially if you have a business that's very niche. Um, Google doesn't even understand the difference between, let's say, hospice and palliative care. Um, it thinks that those two words are the same thing. But, you know, if you're in the industry, you'd know that those two are are different types of services. Mm-hmm. So um, I guess there's there's that human element that's going to be able to to, to step in before the machines like <laughs> um, misinterpret something. Are there things that um, you are doing? you're able to to contribute in in the small business space that you know isn't typically offered or available or seen through um, marketers who are sort of doing the the um, templated cookie cutter approach to lead generation I'm, I'm assuming there is no one size fits all in the work that you do given the things that i've heard you talking about Yeah, no, there's no one size fits all. I'd say that one of the biggest like differentiating factors between me and other pay-per-click marketers is, again, I I don't just look at what's happening in the campaigns. I really care about what's actually happening on the back end because I want my clients to actually be seeing results. So I have a CRM that I set up for my clients. I listen to the phone calls. We do assessments to actually see what's happening beyond actually the the campaign because Mm -hmm. you just... Looking at campaign performance is not enough to really know whether you're truly succeeding or not. Having that client feedback too is really critical. If you're running any type of pay-per-click marketing campaign with a vendor or a pay-per-click marketer, you need to be giving them feedback or else they're not going to know how to get any better um, besides what they're seeing in the account. And sometimes what's in the account might not be a true depiction of what's happening on the business side of things. Yeah. Yeah. So you, your your agency is called Level Twenty Eight. What what is what is the name from? Yeah, so twenty. It's actually my launching pad number. Uh, it's a it's a good luck number for me. <laughs> I was twenty eight when I got engaged. I was twenty eight when I was you know starting my like freelance career. Uh-huh. And yeah, and I was twenty eight when I also bought my first house. So it's a really good. Oh, number I love that. For me. <laughs> and I don't know. I don't know about you, but I love being twenty eight. So I don't know what your favorite age was, but <laughs> you know when I ask people that question, a lot of people say it's like in their late twenties. How about you? What would you say? David. Oh well, I will. I will simply say that twenty eight is the uh, is my birth date, October twenty eighth. So um, nice. that's that's my connection there. I don't know that I loved being twenty eight. I was. Uh, um, I'm I'm quite happy now at uh, just shy of fifty. So I'll I'll uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll I'll leave it at that. Um, well, th- that's excellent. So uh, you you mentioned um, uh, that you were working with professional services before before we hit record. You said you had clients uh, up in my neck of the woods here in Oregon. Where do you where do you serve clients and um, and and what are the sort of things that you uh, obviously we've been talking about pay per click advertising, but what are the, what are the range of services that you provide in, in that space? Yeah, so I serve clients all across the US. um, And then the types of services that I provide, it's mainly uh, Google Ads, pay per click lead generation, uh, professional services, uh, local businesses. So think any anything like an executive executive coaching. Um, I don't do marketing agencies because I am one. <laughs> you know, I tend to get a lot of that. Um, and then let's see what else. So locksmiths, orthodontists, denti- uh, dentists, uh, anything in like the medical field. Mm-hmm. Um, so really is just comes down to a lot of like local lead generation. And I think there's a lot of crossover from the types of things that each of those businesses might need. So, so the fact that they're serving a local audience, a local area. Exactly. Can, um, I, I should just have you clarify for our listeners, what's the big difference there versus if they are going more broadly, if they're you know, working nationally? Is it the scale of a budget? Is it the range of competition for advertising? What 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 is different local versus national or regional when it comes to pay-per-click? This is often, uh, often a discussion in SEO that local is a lot easier to rank for. I'm, mm-hmm. But I've never had that uh, discussion around pay-per-click. So I'm curious to hear um, your from your perspective. 
Well, you answered your own question. It is budget. <laughs> it is budget. So the bigger that the geography is, the more budget you're going to need in order to capture the demand. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, the bigger your geography, the more competition you're going to experience. So that's exactly that's exactly it. Excellent. All right. Well, I'm I'm sitting here on your website, and I hope that our listeners will find their way there too. Um, for their benefit, you want to let them know where it is and what the domain is. Yeah, absolutely. So my website is uh, www.level28media.com. And, you know, if you're interested in talking about uh, Google ads, I'm happy to have a discussion with you if you're a local uh, business or professional service business looking to um, amplify, as long as you have a good <laughs> oper operations in the background, then <laughs> let's have a conversation. I'm happy to help you um, discuss your uh, pay-per-click advertising needs. Excellent. Well, once again, that's level28media.com. And the 28 is uh, the numbers 28. So level28media.com. Michelle Kopp, this has been a fabulous conversation. I thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much, David. Indeed. Folks, you've been listening to more Perfect Marketing. If you know somebody who could benefit from listening to the conversation you just heard, please share it with them. Until next time, I'm David Baer. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.